At the end of this lesson, the learners are expected to organize data in a frequency distribution. They are also expected to learn how to construct frequency histogram, polygon, and curve. It is also expected that learners know how to sketch less than and greater than OCHI. Let us discuss first the different methods of data presentation. We have the textual presentation. It is used when one wants to emphasize salient characteristics of data. In other words, if you want to present your data in text, you can use the textual presentation. The second method is a tabular presentation. Presenting data in a frequency distribution is a tabular presentation. It is used when you want to present data in a table form. The, the process is called tabulation. It is where data are being condensed and arranged in a table. And we also have the graphical presentation. When you use this graphical, graphical presentation, you are illustrating your data by means of graphs or charts. Frequency distribution can be classified into two. The simple frequency distribution and the grouped frequency distribution. The simple frequency distribution is a tabular presentation of categorical data. Let us look at the example. The example presents the data on the number of falls on the different degrees of agreement. Well, the group frequency distribution is a tabular presentation of quantitative or numerical data. Look at the example. It is the distribution of age in Barangay Masaya residents. We know that age is numerical data or a quantitative type of data. To demonstrate how to determine the class boundaries, class size, class mark, and class limits, copy the link below and watch the video in my YouTube channel. In the construction of a frequency distribution, we will follow the following steps. The first step is to determine its range. For the purpose of the calculation, we will be using the example at the right side. Range is the difference between the highest observable value and the lowest observable value. Refer to the example at the right side. The highest observable value is 30, while the lowest observable value is 9. Therefore, R equals 30 minus 9 equals 21. So the range is equal to 21. The second step is to determine the number of classes or the class interval. We will be using K as the number of classes. There are authors uh, have, having different formula, but for the purpose of our discussion, we will be using K equals to square root of N. So in our example, since N equals 35, the square root of 35 is about 5.92. The value of K is expected to be a counting number or a whole number. And we always prefer to use the add number instead of even number. In the example, our K will be 5 instead of 6. The next step is to determine the class size. Class size are the difference between two consecutive intervals. Class size is equal to range divided by K. Since range equals to 21 and K equals 5, Class size will be equal to 21 divided by 5, which is about 4.2. Again, we prefer an add number. So we choose 5 instead of 4. The fourth step is to determine the lower limit of the first class interval. The first lower limit could be the lowest observable value or a value lower than the lowest observable value. In the case of our example, the lowest observable value is 9. Therefore, we can use 9 as the lower limit of the first class interval. Or, we can also use a number below 9. Next is to enumerate the class intervals. 
we have now the class intervals. If you remember, class size is the difference between the consecutive class intervals. The computed class size is 5. Therefore, the difference between the two consecutive intervals must be 5. The last step is to tally the observation to determine the frequencies. So if you, if you are going to count how many observations fall within 9 to 13, you can count 4 observations. And for the interval 14 to 18, you will have 3 observations. For interval 19 to 23, there are 15 observations and 12 observations for interval 24 to 28 and only one observation that is observed in the interval 29 to 32. If you are going to total the number of observations or the sum of the frequencies of all the intervals, you will get a total of 35. If you recall, n is 35 and n refers to the total number of Observations are the sum of the frequency. The less than cumulative frequency counts the number of observations less than the upper limit. Let's take a look at our example. The interval 9 to, 4, 9 to 13 rather, have 4 observations and the interval 14 to 18 have 3. Uh, take a look at the first interval. 9 to 13. So, how many observations lower than the upper limit? The upper limit for 9 to 13 interval is 13. So, how many observations lower than 13? There are 4. We move on to the second interval. The second interval, 14 to 18, has 3 observations. If we are going to count the less than cumulative frequency up to the second interval, we will count the number of observations lower than 18. So if we count the number of observations lower than 18, that includes 9 to 13 interval. Therefore, we have to add 4 and 3. That is why the less than cumulative frequency for the interval 14 to 18 is 7. The same process is done when you are going to get the less than cumulative frequency for the interval 19 to 23. In other words, you simply add the frequency of the intervals lower than 23. So when you add 4, 3, and 15, you will get 22. If you are going to get the less than cumulative frequency for the interval 24 to 28, you will add the frequencies for 3, 15, and 12. That is why you have 34. Okay, if you're going to get the less than cumulative frequency for the interval 29 to 33, that's basically refers to the total number of observations. That is why you have 35. Well, greater than cumulative frequency is basically the, the opposite of the less than cumulative frequency. It counts the number of frequency greater than the lower limit. Okay, so the first interval is 9 to 13. If you're going to count all the observations greater than 9 basically that is your total observation so that is why you have 35 okay for the interval 14 to 18 you have 31 because you are only counting the number of observations greater than 14 so that is from 14 to 33 so from 35 uh, that becomes 31 because you subtract it with 4 because there are 4 observations in the interval 9 to 13 Okay, you do the same process if you want to get the greater than cumulative frequency um, in the interval 29 to 33. So you will notice that uh, the greater than cumulative frequency for the interval 29 to 33 is only one because there is only one observation that is observed from 29 to 33. Histogram is a graphical presentation of your data set. It is a set of vertical bars whose areas are proportional to the frequencies represented. The y-axis is simply your upper limits and the x-axis are your class marks. So we already discussed what class mark is. It is the average of our class intervals. 
polygon, on the other hand, is a line chart plotted along the same scale as the frequency histogram. If you are going to observe the graph, take a look at the polygon is simply the connected lines of the points in your histogram. Curved is the smooth frequency polygon drawn to show the frequency distribution of a population or sample with continuous data. So instead of straight lines in a polygon, you simply use the curved or the smooth line in presenting your data. So it is emphasized that you can only construct a frequency curve when you have a continuous data. Okay, so the graph of the less than old chive. So the graph of less than old chive is an increasing graph and it uses the curved, not the polygon, because its graph is a smooth line. While the greater than old chive is a decreasing line, it also uses the smooth line, meaning uh, it, it, the graph is a curve, not a polygon. That ends our lesson 1.3. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell for more updates of our lesson. Thank you.